Hello, I'm Nigel Lithgow, and this is The Enemy Within, a unique quiz show because one of our five contestants has been given all the answers. They are the enemy. But who is it? Well, that's up to the other four to decide. Otherwise, they will lose everything that they win today. Let's meet them. Annie Nevitt from Walsall. Chris Earle from Pontypridd. Kath Marshall from York. Mark Hobson from Somerset. And Liz Westlatorn from Kent. You've never met each other before now, so take a look at the person next to you. They could be the enemy. I, like you, don't know who it is. The only clues we'll get is how they answer their questions. Will they step into the spotlight and answer everything correctly, or try and hide in the shadows? Either way, they must be discovered today, otherwise they will take all of your winnings. Let's meet our first enemy suspect. Annie Nevitt, you're a full-time mum. Let's see what you said when we asked you, how do you feel about cheating? I don't condone cheating, and I don't cheat myself. And they do say that cheats never prosper, but the very good ones get away with it. And I hate that. It's not fair on everybody else. I do hate cheats. You'll hate the enemy today, Annie, especially if they're not caught and walk off with your money. That is, if it isn't you. Annie Nevitt. Are you the enemy? No, I'm not. I'm going to ask you three questions. Each one is worth £25. If you don't know the answer or you answer incorrectly, I'll throw it open for a bonus. And remember, although you'll be answering your own questions today, it's how other people answer theirs which will give you the clues as to the identity of the enemy. Let's play round one. What is the fastest ball game in the world, Annie? Throwing it open. Kath. Squash. No, it's Pelotta, and balls travel at something like 188 miles an hour. How many hundredweight make up an imperial ton? Don't know. Throwing it open. The answer is 20. Who wrote the epic poem Paradise Lost? Throwing it open, Mark. Milton? It was John Milton. I'm surprised. You must have heard of Paradise Lost, Annie. Yeah. <laughs> heard of it, but no, wouldn't have got that. Really? Let's move to our second enemy suspect. Chris Earle, you're a civil servant. Let's see what you said when we asked you, is cheating permissible? Always. Um, in, in life, people only remember who wins. They don't remember who came second. Um, so many people cheat in cars, they cheat at golf, um, so if it takes cheating to win, I have no problem with that. You're a man who has no problem with cheating. Chris Earle, are you the enemy? No, Nigel, I am not. Your three questions, each one is worth £25. Do stalactites form from the ceiling or the floor of a cave? Ceiling. Correct. In which ocean is the island of Zanzibar? Indian Ocean. Correct. Who left Brookside to play Roxy in the musical Chicago? Claire Sweeney. Correct. All three right, Chris. Let's move to our third enemy suspect, Kath Marshall, a bank clerk. We asked her, do you think cheating is a good thing or a bad thing? It's bad. Um, you always get found out in the end. Cheats never prosper. Uh, it makes it worse if you actually cheat when you get found out. You can stretch the truth a little bit, which is a little bit different, but you can be very clever and not get found out, and you prosper that way. It's only stretching the truth. It's not actually cheating. I wonder if you'll stretch the truth when I ask you, Kath Marshall, are you the enemy? No, Nigel, absolutely not. Your three questions, each worth £25. Who is chairman of the media giant News Corporation? Rupert Murdoch. Correct. In which South American country is Portuguese the first language? <laughs> Throwing it open, Annie. Brazil. Correct. Which toy created by inventor Ty Warner went on sale in 1993? <laughs> Throwing it open. The enemy's playing a very good game. The enemy knows all of the answers. And that answer was Beanie Babies. Let's move on 
to our fourth enemy suspect. Mark Hobson, a cabin crew trainer, we asked you, how far would you take cheating? I'd take cheating as far as necessary, to be honest, and I have done in the past. I used to work as an entertainer, and in order to get the job, I extended the truth on my CV. My walk-on roles suddenly became great big starring parts. I wonder what your starring part is going to be today, Mark, that of detective or enemy. Mark Hobson. Are you the enemy? No, Nigel, of course I'm not. Your three questions, each worth £25. According to Forbes magazine in 2002, who was the world's richest man? Bill Gates. Correct. Hybrid tea and floribunda are types of which bush? Hyacinth. Throwing it open. Kath. Rose. Correct. You've never heard of hybrid tea? No. <laughs> don't you do any gardening, Mark? Uh, no, I don't, no. Not a big gardener. The 2002 Ben Elton musical, We Will Rock You, uses the music of which rock group? Queen. Correct. Let's move on to our final enemy suspect, Liz Westlatorn, a government worker. Let's see what she said when we asked her, what makes a good cheat? Someone who is prepared to lie and cheat to get what they want, as long as they can convince themselves and can convince others, then that's good. And also someone who's prepared to go all out for what they want and get what they want at the end of it. That, for me, Liz, is the perfect description of today's enemy. Liz Westlatorn. Are you the enemy? No, Nigel, I'm not. Your three questions, each worth £25. The Battle of Waterloo was fought in which country? France. Trying it open. Chris? Belgium. Correct. The singles Family Affair and Dance For Me feature on whose No More Drama album? Don't know. Throwing it open. Mary J. Blige. Who designed the lions in Trafalgar Square? Don't know. Throwing it open. Chris. Edwin Lancia. Correct. Well, that's the end of that round. I'm not going to give you your running totals. Only our viewers at home will be able to see those. What I can tell you is that Chris is currently in the lead. Is that because he's clever and knows the answers? Or is it because he's cheating? and he's been given the answers. This is what you must decide. As must you at home if you want to join in. The telephone lines will be open at the end of our next round, and if you think you know who the enemy is, then you can give us a call. I've now asked all five of you, are you the enemy? All five have said no, which means as well as a cheat now, we have a liar amongst us. They must be caught in order for you to go home with any money today. Now, if you didn't pick up any clues in that last round, Perhaps you will as we move into the next round where each question is worth £50. It's a buzzer round. First on the buzzer gets the question. If you give me an incorrect answer, it will be thrown open for a bonus. A word of warning. Don't get lost in the game. Stay focused in order to flush out the faker in round two. Which stimulant is found in tea and coffee? Kath. Caffeine. Correct. According to author Jeanette Winterson, what are not the only fruit? Liz. Oranges. Correct. Which outer garment left the right arm uncovered and was worn by ancient Romans? Chris. Toga. Toga is correct. What varieties of bird can be long-eared, barn and tall? Mark. Owl. Correct. In Greek mythology, what is the name of the savage one-eyed giant? Chris. Cyclops. Was indeed. Sharing her name with Shakespeare's wife, who starred in the princess? Chris. Hathaway. Jean Hathaway. Throwing it open, Liz. Anne Hathaway. Correct. Which fishing port in Scotland's Tayside region is famed for its smokies? Mark. Arbroath. Correct. Do you eat them? I don't, but I saw a cooking programme about them once. Really? Which happy band did Sean Ryder front? Mark. Happy Mondays. Correct. Robusta is a type of which bean, Liz? Sorry. Throwing it open. Annie. Runner. No, it's a coffee bean. How many inches in a yard? Liz. Twelve. Throwing it open. Chris. Thirty-six. Correct. I'm still not going to reveal your individual totals. All I can tell you is that Chris is still in the lead, but does that mean he's today's enemy? We're now at the halfway stage, and you must be starting to have some thoughts. Let me pick up on those. Annie, who do you suspect at the moment of being today's enemy? 
Chris is either very clever or the enemy, or both. Right. So, Chris, I think. Because he's in the lead. He's standing there in the spotlight answering the questions. He's not frightened of that, or do you think it's a double bluff? I can't believe how quick it can get them up. I'm still thinking about the question. And he's pressed the buzzer. Right. Chris, who do you think the enemy is and why? I think it's Mark. Really? Why? He just looks very shifty. Can't trust him. <laughs> Kath, who do you suspect is the enemy and why? I think it's Mark as well. Really? Why? Yes. If he can exaggerate parts in plays and things and bluff that way, I think he can bluff us. Indeed. He's a performer. He is. Mark, who do you suspect is the enemy and why? I think it's Liz. Liz? I why? think that uh, she knew exactly what kind of bean robusta was and just thought at the last minute, I better not say, because it would appear too smart. Liz, who do you think the enemy is and why? I think it could be Mark as well. Really? Three fingers pointing at Mark. Why do you think it's Mark? I can see him shaking from here. Maybe he's nervous or maybe he's trying to cover his, his cheating with fear. Well, he's doing rather well with the questions and certainly Chris is. You have to ask yourselves, is it the people in the spotlight? Or is it the people hanging back, like Kath and Annie? How are you doing at home? You've heard what our contestants think. Three fingers pointing at Mark. But have you spotted something that they've missed? If you think you know who the enemy is, why not call us? If you think it's Annie, then call 0901 383 4141. If you think it's Chris, then call 0901 383 4142. If you think it's Kath, then call 0901 383 4143. If you think it's Mark, then call 0901 383 4144. And if you think it's Liz, then call 0901 383 4145. Five randomly selected winners will each receive £200. The lines will be open until the end of the final round and calls cost 25 pence. We'll move on to our third round. I'm now going to ask each are worth £75 and they're on a specific subject. The problem is you haven't chosen that specific subject, so it's quite possible you will get them wrong. Unless, of course, you've been given the answers. Time is running out, so let's play round three. Annie, your specific subject is television pubs. You watch a lot of television? Yes. Do you go to the pub much? Unfortunately, yes. Let's see how you do with this. Who became landlord and landlady of the Rovers' return after the departure of Beck Gilroy? Jack and Vera. Jack and Vera Duckworth. Well done, yes. What was the name of the Boston bar where everybody knows your name? Cheers. Correct. Who was with Grant and Sharon when they were held hostage in the Queen Vic by Dougie Briggs in 1994? Michelle. Michelle Fowler. Well done. Three out of three. You know your pubs and you know your soaps, Annie. Or have you been told? Chris, let's move on to your specialist subject. It is Stephen King. Do you read his books? No, I don't. Have you read the answers to today's quiz? No, I haven't. In which of King's novels is a writer held hostage by his number one fan? The Shining. Throwing it open, Mark. Misery. Misery made a great movie as well with Kathy Bates. In the film Pet Cemetery, who played the minister? James Kahn. Throwing it open. It was Stephen King himself. And the enemy knew that and didn't move. So the enemy is hiding in the dark. Under which pseudonym did King publish Rage? Don't know. Throwing it open. It was Richard Backman. Kath, we'll move to your specialist subject, spices. Do you do a lot of cooking? I do. You should do well here. Made from the stigma of the crocus, which is the world's most expensive spice? Saffron. It is indeed. What is the distinctive colour of turmeric? It's ready orange. Throwing it open. Liz? Yellow. It is yellow. Obviously, you don't use that spice, Cap. No. Which spice is widely renowned as a key ingredient in Hungarian food? Paprika. Correct. Mark, 
Your specialist subject is stately homes. Blenheim Palace has a unique path designed by which gardener? Capability Brown. Correct. The Duke of Devonshire's ancestral home is in Derbyshire. What is it called? Can I get open, Chris? Chatsworth House. Chatsworth House is correct. Bewley is home of the Montague family and which national museum? The Motor Museum. It is the Motor Museum, the National Motor Museum. Liz, we move to you. Your specialist subject are the Oscars. Which Basic Instinct star won a producer's Oscar for One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? I don't know. Throwing it open. Chris. Michael Douglas. Correct. Which comedian has hosted the most Oscar award ceremonies? Whoopi Goldberg. No, throwing it open. Mark. Steve Martin. No, it was Bob Hope, a little before your time, I would suggest. In 1974, which film became the only sequel to win Best Picture? Bucky 2. Throwing it open. Godfather Part 2. It was the Godfather Part 2. Well, that's the end of that round, and for the first time, I can now reveal your cash totals. And for you at home, a reminder of those telephone numbers, which will close at the end of our next round. Liz, you have £175. Annie, you have £250. Kath, you have £250. Mark, you have £450. And Chris, you have £500. So Chris is our current leader. Does that mean that he's the cleverest? and he's not frightened of being out there, or is he the cheat? Let's take a moment's pause in order to look at some of your past history. Annie, years ago you let your sister's gerbils out of their cage, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. They were eaten by the cat. Yeah. And you didn't ever tell her? She went so mad at the cat. Did I didn't want to be on the other end of her fury. I wonder if you're going to be on the other end of our contestants' fury today, if you're the enemy. I was only seven. Chris, you play in a band. I do. And years ago, you told everybody that you were Roy Wood's son, <laughs> and you actually played in the Electric Light Orchestra. Uh, yes. You also told people <laughs> in a hotel that you were in Led Zeppelin. Yes. And that was given away <laughs> when 100 heavy metal fans turned up to see your band. Uh, yes. And you weren't Led Zeppelin, uh, Chris. No. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> so Chris does have a history of lying. Is he the enemy today? Kath Marshall. Your husband doesn't like rabbit, does he, to eat? No. No. Why do you constantly serve it to him, pretending it's chicken, Kath? <laughs> well, he gets it to eat it, <laughs> If Kath would cheat her husband, she'd certainly cheat you. Mark, when you were on a plane and a lady said to you in broken English because she didn't have a great command of the language, that she didn't like additives in her drink, you served her a drink saying it was sans preservative, which you thought meant without additives. It actually means without condoms, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> Liz. You have a history of telling lies. You gave a friend a cockatiel's egg and pretended it was a mint. When Canterbury Cathedral wasn't lit, you told a friend it had been knocked down. <laughs> and they believed you. Yeah. A very persuasive liar. Perfect to be the enemy. I hope this has given you an insight into the characters around you. Maybe you can build up a profile of today's enemy. Let's move on into our final round, and this is a chance for you to build that money up. The first question is worth £100, and any player can buzz in. If the question is answered correctly, the next question goes up by £25, but the questions will not be offered across. In a moment, I'm going to ask you the most vitally important question of the day. Who is the enemy? You must give me that answer at the end of this, our final round. For £100, Despite its name, which war begun in 1337? Chris. Hundred Years' War. Correct. For £125, for which Coen Brothers film did Francis McDormand win the... Chris. Fargo. Correct. For £150 in cookery, Crepe Suzette and Blinis are... Pancakes. They are indeed. For £175, of which Manx village is the Lady Isabella a landmark? Mark. Douglas. No, it's Laxey. Still for £175, what nationality is the pop group Ace of Base? 
Liz. Swedish. Swedish is correct for 200 pounds. Which plant is the national emblem of Ireland? Mark. Shamrock. Shamrock is correct for 225 pounds. In which panel show did losers get a checkbook and pen statuette? Liz. Blankety blank. Blankety blank is correct. 250 pounds. How is the sport of toxophily more commonly known? Chris. Archery. Correct. 275 pounds. Who wrote Murder on the Orient Express? Mark. Agatha Christie. Correct. For 300 pounds, TV cook Delia Smith is the director of which book? Mark. Norwich City Football Club. Correct. Well, that is the end of our quiz, and our phone lines are now closed. Here are your final cash totals. Annie, you have 250 pounds. Kath, you have 250 pounds. Liz, you have 725 pounds. Chris, you have 975 pounds. Mark, you have £1,225, which means that Mark is today's winner. But that could be the closest you ever get to that money. It can still be stolen from you because the enemy is still within. But I'll be asking you to nominate that enemy, and you must agree by a majority. If you give me a split decision, then the audience's vote will be decided. So, audience, who is the enemy? At stage, our audience's vote will only be seen by our viewers at home. You have a chance to think. You must now decide what you think the strategy has been by our enemy today. Have they stepped out into the spotlight and answered the questions like Chris and Mark? Or have they hidden themselves in the shadows and been very quiet like Annie and Kath have been, not really coming forward with the answers, and when they have answered, they've been extremely nervous? You must find the enemy today, or the enemy will walk away with all of your money. So, Annie, who is today's enemy? Mark. Chris, who is today's enemy? Mark. Kath, who is today's enemy? Mark. Mark, who is today's enemy? Liz. Liz, who is today's enemy? Mark. We certainly have a unanimous decision all four of the other contestants point their finger at you, Mark. But are they right? Will the real enemy stand up? Congratulations, Annie. You've outwitted all of you fellow contestants. Please sit down. I have to say that with 33%, the audience spotted you. So, you played it very cleverly. I noticed your timing on the button because every time Chris buzzed in to answer the questions, you hammered it hard just after he'd buzzed in. Were you doing that on purpose? He was just too quick. Were you going to give me the answers? When I realised that his reactions were quicker than mine, I was just acting naturally. Mm. You didn't answer any of your own questions in the first round at all. And then you buzzed in on other people's. I thought that was a very clever way of doing it. And then in the final round, you just sat back and didn't bother. I wasn't cheating. I was only doing my job. Which is to cheat, Annie. Yep. You almost seem embarrassed to be the cheat today. A little. Well, you've got £3,425. If you're uncomfortable, you can always hand it back. <sighs> and who can blame you? You've outwitted your fellow contestants. You get what you deserve. Everything that they've won. Well done. Chris, you didn't spot Annie? No. You did very well in the quiz. You picked up £975. Of course, that goes to Annie now. Uh, but you played into her hands, didn't you? Certainly did. Were you concentrating on who the enemy was or just in getting the questions right? I was concentrating on who the enemy was. Um, but... You didn't get I, that I, right. No, didn't get it right at all. No. Kath, you sat there very quietly. You picked up £250, uh, which of course goes to Annie. Never thought about Annie? I thought about her, especially when she knew the old East Ender one. Because I thought, that's going back a quite a long way to remember that. Mm. But then I thought, I don't know, Mark squared me somehow. Really? Mark, you must feel choked. £1,225. Um, <laughs> choked isn't a word, I don't think. Uh, I can't believe it. Really can't. It was in my hands and... I mean, all, all credit to Annie, you know, she did very well, but there you go, it's, it's gone. It has gone. And all four fingers pointed at you? I'm 
just managed to, to get the right questions right at the correct time. But as all of the names are coming out, and it went Mark, Mark, and as soon as Kath said it, I knew it was pointless what I said, because I knew it, I wasn't the enemy. Liz, you didn't spot any? I was wary at first, but then I, was, then I thought it was Mark as well. Yeah, 725 pounds handed over. Not as much as Mark. Not as much as Mark. <laughs> it's the only consolation. Well, you all lose because you didn't do your job today. You didn't spot the enemy. So you're gonna be going home with what you justly deserve. Absolutely nothing. How did you do at home? Did you spot Annie? Do you think you'd make a great detective and you wanna come on the show? Or do you think you'd make a great enemy and come on the show? If you do, then why not write to us at this address? The Enemy Within, Post Office Box 22122, London SE1, 9GL, and please include a stamped, self-addressed envelope. Well, today's enemy Annie escaped with everyone's money. Hopefully five of you out there spotted her, as did our audience, but it does prove that a good cheat and everybody else's money can't be parted. See you next time, and remember, keep your friends close and your enemies even closer when you can spot them. Nigel's back at midday on Wednesday here on BBC One.